Can I draw on this? Whoa! No way! That's just as easy as it looks like in the video. What's up everyone? Welcome back to Doki Doki Drawing. We're looking at this new piece of software that I've never tried before. This is literally the first time I've loaded it up. It's called Vroid Studio. It's not even version one. So this is technically beta version software, but it's called Vroid Studio and it's by a company called Pixiv, which you may be very familiar with. Probably the most popular art sharing site in Japan. Anyway, the reason we're interested in this software is because if you use this, you can create a 3D model to create what's very, very popular right now, VTubers. And there's multiple ways to make a VTuber. You can pretend that you, there's no human behind them and they, they actually are alive. Or you've got VTubers who everyone knows exactly who they are in real life, but they've got their sort of virtual persona, which is slightly different. There's a, there's a large variety of ways that it can be done. But the stage we're at with Doki Doki Drawing now is just to open up the software and figure out what can actually be done with it. And I think ideally we want to get to a point where we can create a 3D version of the live 2D character that was made for Doki Doki Drawing before, the girl with the pink hair. In the end, I don't think she actually has a name. Anyway, here in the software, I can actually change this to English, which is very, very generous of Pixiv to go ahead and already make an English version of a software that's not even at version 1.0 yet. And it looks like we've got some sample characters that we can actually start off with. Now, hairstyle, I think Doki Doki Chan actually resembles this darkness Shibu character the most, but I think Probably body style type this character Vita or Victoria are probably closest. I think we can probably start with this character Vita. If we just change her outfit to white and we change her hair to pink, we'll probably have a really good start. Now I've not watched any actual tutorials on how to use this program. This is just an experiment to find out what this software can do. If you are an absolute beginner, you go in, it's just like, what are you going to see as a brand new user? So here we are in the main screen. It has loaded up our sample and now I'm clicking the right, I'm, I'm using the right click on the mouse and I can rotate the character around like this. We can spin them around this way, spin them around the other way. I can even spin them upside down, see them from below or above. And it looks like the scroll wheel on the mouse actually zooms our character in. So if I use the scroll wheel, I can zoom right in, I guess on the I guess it zooms in on their neck. That's the, the main control point here. And on the right side, I've got parameters. So I guess by wiggling these sliders. Oh, interesting. So I, I've already got instant control. I've done literally nothing except open up the sample character. If I slide on these sliders, you can give them slightly more droopy eyes or more pointed eyes. One thing I did see on the internet is that you can actually change this to a number higher than one. So if I change this to like three, <laughs> you can give them a very, very, like they're scheming, they're scheming something kind of tricky. You can change the slant on the inside. So I guess if you have the slant very, very in like this and you have the outer eyelid all the way up, then this is more of the tsudime as opposed to the tademe, which are like the slant eyes or the droopy eyes. Wow, there's a lot of sliders. We've got inner eye slant, we've got eye position. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can move their eyes way below. Let's rotate this. Let's see what happens to eyes proximity. Whoa! You can have the eyes actually way up close to the face. It's funny when you imagine, I mean, Hinoe often says this to us in, in videos when we're doing videos for Doki Doki Drawing, but he said, if you imagine how big the eyeball must actually be, it would actually be jutting out of the head. If you actually imagined, because you only see about 10% of the eyeball or 5% of the eyeball when you're looking at the front of a face, but on the inside, there's like the whole spherical shape. You can imagine like that eyeball would probably be bulging out of the side of the head and beyond the beyond the jaw, but it's not supposed to be realistic. It's anime. We do whatever we want. Even before you've drawn, if you're drawing just a manga and you don't plan to use any 3D materials at all, you could use this just to experiment to see how, you know, this affects the look of the character, whether you want them to look more angry or you want them to look more positive and optimistic about their future. Like there's so many tropes in, in Japanese anime that I think instantly just by moving the shape of the eyes, you already go, okay, I already know exactly what kind of character this person is supposed to be. Gaze upward. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so if you want your character to constantly look like they're rolling their eyes, like they never ever look down, they're just, I'm rolling my eyes and I don't believe anything you say ever. You're dumb. I quite like this actually. Have the mouth down, have the mouth up. This person looks like a vampire. You can have some very, very interesting interesting characters. And this is all using just the sample characters. I mean, you know, I have 
as I've done some 3D modeling before, but I've not, the, every software is different. So you can like make a 3D character from scratch or you can use one of these tools that has a general rigged 3D model and it just, you just change the parameters. And I'm, I'm really impressed with how much variety you can get out of these sliders. Oh wow, and you can change the ear tips to be straight up elf style. But first things first, I think we want to change the color of the hair. So where do we find that? We go to the hair editor. First thing I want to do is actually change the color. So I'm going to texture and it says white here. This is the base color. So I'll click on the base color and let's change this to, oh wow, it's already working really nicely. And change this to a darker pink. Change the shade color to a similar pink. We'll use the eyedropper. There we go. Have a nice dark color for the base color. Click on the highlights, click on the eyedropper tool. I mean, this software, I've literally never opened it before, but it's so similar to programs like Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop that I'm, I'm finding it very, very natural to just jump straight in, in, in and start using it. So the hair is actually broken up into separate parts. I wasn't aware of this, but you can click on this, the eye icon here to switch off different parts. So if we turn off the back hair, we turn off the front hair. Oh wow, and you've also got these meshes that help you draw the hair. I've seen that before. And there we go. We've got the base skull of the character with base hair. Can you actually turn the base hair off? Oh, you can. In fact, okay. So you can actually turn the base hair off. We can just start completely from scratch. I've seen this on YouTube where people do the, the freehand thing. This is actually on the official Pixiv site. This is like one of the things that they show because I think people are scared with 3D modeling. Like they know they can make a character, a very, you know, maybe a simple character, but like, how would you model hair? I feel like that sounds like a really scary thing. But I think if you just click on this freehand group, let's see what happens if I click on brush. Can I draw on this? Whoa, oh my Lord. No way. That is actually as easy as, that's just as easy as it looks like in the video. Let's, oh wow, hang on a second. If I hold space, I can move the character around like this. Let's just see if I can draw some simple hair. So let's have a main bundle here. And let's just keep going around until we've covered the front of the character's face. Oh wow, and it's just got a very clever algorithm that helps it snake around really, really naturally. Wow, I can't believe how easy this is. This is, this should not be allowed. New artists, you should definitely not download this program because you will get so lazy. You're gonna be like, I ain't never drawing again. We are all going into the, the Vroid 3D world. This is absolutely incredible. And how much hair do we want to give them on the back? I mean, I'm using just the base mesh, so I'm, I'm not doing anything really, really clever here. But I assume that if I change the mesh, and maybe we can actually do that now, uh, click on select. Oh, this is it. So all I did was click on the, the cursor. Let's say that I want the mesh to come out more like this. Oh, wow. And so all of the art, all of the hair on this mesh will be bound to this mesh. So what I've just drawn now is on freehand group number one. I'll just show you from the, the front. I can switch all of this off and then I can now draw in freehand group two. So let's give her pink hair and let's say that the pink hair is just really wild. Like it does something that normal hair just absolutely never ever would do. And I, I don't even know, <laughs> this is, it's all, it's all gone horrifically wrong, but we can actually mix and mash now, mix and match. Mix and mash. We can mix and match so I can put freehand group one back on and now we've got a combination of the two and I, I assume that I can change the mesh of freehand group two individually, yes. So I have individual control over what the pink hair does. It can actually, if I decided like, actually I want the pink hair to be on top of the blue hair. Whoa, this is, oh, this is nuts. Why is this so easy? All right, I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm gonna get rid of this one. Let's try and have a look at the Doki Doki Chan character. Let's give her pink eyes. I don't know how to do that, but if I click on eyes, is there a way to change the texture? Click on texture. Why? Why is it so simple? <laughs> Why is this so easy? This is totally, totally ridiculous. Okay, and this is the layer. Can I just go here to pink and just, change this to pink now. I've got a brush. <laughs> I mean, this is this is not a very, very in-depth paint job, but let me, let me just try again. If I were to draw it completely from scratch, I guess I would just make the iris completely pink here. Make this iris also completely pink. Let's just, let's just see how we, 
Let's see how far we can go with this. So on top of this layer, let's have a dark purple. Give her an iris in the middle. Put here, one here as well, iris in the middle. Use a softer brush now. Let's have some shadow around the, the top. Does this look anything like the Doki Doki character now? Looking close. Literally doing this completely without a tutorial. I watched one video for about 10 minutes before getting into this and I was like, you know what? This is definitely something that I have to just jump in and try. And then I think in the future we can do a proper video where we've actually watched a tutorial and we know how to do it properly. But this is just the can a complete beginner jump into this and create, <laughs> create a VTuber. And I'm, in, I'm really, really impressed with how far we've got so far. All right, and now it's time to click on the hair editor portion. So I'll click on this tab here and I'll create a new freehand group. So this will be freehand group three. And let's see if we can start by changing this mesh so that it actually looks a little bit more like the, the hair on Doki Doki Chan. Let's keep calling her that. I mean, it might be easier to just draw this hair first, but in general, I think this is actually already looking exactly how it needs to look. The only thing that's a little difficult is probably the hair right at the end. We're going to need some hair that comes like down like this, but actually all the way down. Oh, wow. That's actually worked. Oh, no, that hasn't worked. It's kind of curled around here. So I'm going to have to make a custom mesh for those, that bit of the hair at the end. So we'll start with a nice thin line like so. That's too thick. Okay, so let's have one thin piece of hair and this one comes all the way down across like so and then a slightly thicker one comes next to it so like this and I'll have this come down like so and just so you know I'm not doing this on a Wacom tablet I'm doing this all <laughs> I'm doing all this all, all of this with a mouse and a keyboard let's see if we can make this puff out a little more healthily to the side like so oh nice <laughs> oh, I've got, it may have gone on not quite long enough. Can I actually change these if I click on control points? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, you can actually drag these control points down if you want them to be a bit longer. Technically, I should have drawn some base hair, but don't really know how to go about that yet. All of this, and I've never used this software before. Unbelievable. The last thing I want to do is create these little tufts of hair that come down either side of the neck. And I think to do that, we need to create a new freehand group. Let's have it come down like so. Let's see if this works. Draw the hair. Let's start from midpoint here. Oh, wow. No way. It did work. Okay. And let's try another one here. Drawing all the way from down here. Like so. <laughs> That uh, is wonderful. That's nothing like it's supposed to look, but let me just double check my reference. Okay, um, that's not exactly how it's supposed to look, but it's close enough. So I'll use the arrow and let's see if we can just drag this hair into, into the correct shape. It does look a little flat, doesn't it? Like while I've actually got this selected, can I change the thickness? Oh, you can, you can add the thickness later. What? And get it to twist? Twist it! Shake a baby! Okay, and just slide this out a little more like so. Dang! And let's move it up a little bit. I think we need to change the mesh for that to happen. All right, and now what all she's missing is that the, the freehand group two, above it is not really giving her enough volume. Now we could create a second group. Let's just create another, a third and final group. Let's give her all the volume that she deserves. You said more volume. We delivered. Okay, this is turning out to be a real disaster. <gasps> what started off as a fairly successful experiment has become a real awful mess. I think this is, this. We, we'll just count this as a learning experience. All right, so <laughs> there you go. Pretty happy with the way that the hair has turned out, but I think the next thing we need to do to make her look a little bit more like Doki Doki Chan is just to give her white, a white outfit. <laughs> 